loss, but a great effort. We were down 35-7. It was, Charles. Now, you know, I commend those guys whenever they put out in the second half. Um, you know, just being down 35-7 and a half and um, just going in, just, just have fun with this thing. You know, just don't be pressed to um, make plays. You know, I thought they did a great job of coming back out the second half and doing those things. Um, they did a great job at it. You know, and it's kind of tough when you're playing on Real good school, Charles, and you're down that, that kind of deficit and come back. Um, New Mexico State, they was really good. Uh, they did some really good stuff. Um, offensive and defensive, you know, so they they was well prepared. Uh, Doug Martin had those guys ready to play, and I thought the first half, we were just kind of mediocre there in the first half, and um, we did some good stuff, Charles, uh, just looking at it, and um, we just didn't make enough plays the first half to to um, to be close than we were the um, first half. So. Second half, they came out and played better. Uh, and I just got to meet with them a minute ago, and we talked about you know the effort that they gave Charles, and I think it was relentless of the way they played, and it was, it was really good in uh, the second half. Well, so we'll, we'll talk all about that coming up here. Let's set it up for you. You can give us a call, 601-877-6595. You can tweet a question, Tall Man Radio. You can text a question, 601-348-7254. We'll get to it all. We'll look at the New Mexico State game. A special announcement, the Fred McNair Radio Show will hit the road. We'll be in Vicksburg after uh, weeks of uh, back-and-forth negotiations. We finally got it all locked in, Coach McNair. We'll be in Vicksburg at the Next Level Sports Grill, located at 4002 Highway 61 South. And uh, we'll have the McNair Show live. Join us in Vicksburg next Monday night. They'll have food specials. Uh, they also have food specials on wings, burgers, sandwiches on uh, days like Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, of course, uh, I'm sure there will be some specials next Monday night. Of course, you can watch uh, all the NFL games there. They have the big screen TV, Sunday NFL ticket. So you can check it out on Sundays if you want to watch a little football. You can check out the Fred Bignair Radio Show as we will be there next Monday night at 6 o'clock. Come one, come all as uh, we'll have the Fred McNair radio show there. So we'll be talking about that throughout the course of the show. The Next Level Sports Grill, 4002 Highway 61 South. For more information, call Arthur Davis or anyone there that can help you out, 601-738-5474, 601-738-5474. So a lot going on with that. And, of course, basketball season starts tomorrow night for the Lady Braves. They open up the season against Lane College at 530. We'll have the broadcast at 515. The men will be playing at Tulsa tomorrow night at 7. And, of course, the men open up the home season Friday night against Blue Mountain. All right, Coach, you talked about New Mexico State playing up. It's always, uh, it's always interesting. And someone was asking me about playing this type of game this late in the season. You usually want to catch these teams early in the year, like a Georgia Tech or as you're playing up. But uh, I thought we hung in there and we really played hard. We made some plays. Our defense finally got a turnover on an overturn call. So there were some chances there, especially in that second half. We did, uh, and there was some chances, Charles. And I thought that you know, the second half we, we played um, uh, a real good uh, second half. Um, you know, the first half we had the, the kickoff for a touchdown. And we had a miscue with the quarterback and uh, running back exchange there. So you give up those uh, those two things, uh, Charles, and take away from that. 14 points, and we pretty much in the ball game. Um, but I thought the second half we, we played a whole lot better, man. And, uh, and I applaud the coaches and, and the players for the effort they gave the second half. Well, I know people are thinking about it, and I'm sure there'll be a question about it, so we can get it out of the way early for the second week in a row. We give up a, we give up a kickoff return for a touchdown, um, a 99-yard return, second week in a row. We've done it, and it seemed like it was the exact same play, kicked on the far side far sideline trying to seal the guy off, cuts it back inside, got this left edge, McCullough couldn't get the angle, touchdown. Almost a carbon copy touchdown from what we saw against Prairie View. Second week in a row, what do we have to do to clean that up going well, the forward? the biggest thing is, Charles, we, that'll be cleaned up, you know, this week. And um, we just had some guys out and you know, having to fill some guys in those spots, Charles. That's what happened when uh, you don't have all your guys on special teams. So we just have to re re remodel it. Uh, this week and going into uh, the next week, uh, get all our guys back on it because you, sometimes you have to take away from something uh, to make the rest of it work, Charles. And I thought we did a pretty good job as a, as a coaching staff of kind of putting it together um, in those um, instances 
where we had to take some guys off and some of the guys that, that was on it, um, the Brady Smiths and, and those guys that didn't play this week. So you have to add guys to it as well. But I thought that um, we did a great job of uh, doing it. We just had some lang exchange um, um, that wouldn't feel right, um, guys slowing down uh, and opening up gaps and things of that nature. So uh, it will be corrected this week and next week um, for the Jackson State ball game. So we were down 16 seconds in, seven to nothing. We went three and out, and then on the next drive for New Mexico State, uh, they went uh, 64 yards, uh, and they, before you know it, it was 14 to nothing. Ten play, 64 yard drive. Uh, it was a fourth down that they converted. They had a second and 11, so they were behind the chains, and they went for it on fourth down. And before you know it, uh, Atkins passed to. Royce Caldwell, it was 14 to nothing in the first five minutes, coach of the game. Yeah, and it was hard. Like I said, they, they was a pretty good team. They had some good stuff that they were doing on offense. And um, uh, we were just, just a little bit, um, I don't know, it we, we was uptight. These guys have to relax and just play football with Charles. And, um, like I said, before you know it, we down 14 to nothing. You, you always, and this is kind of a reoccurring thing, you talked about it every week, you talk about it on the pregame, you want to start fast. And <laughs> unfortunately, we dug ourselves a, uh, an early hole again, but of course the goal always is to start fast. That is right, and uh, you know we—that's our goal is to go out and start fast every week. You know, and uh, this this game we didn't start fast. You know, we were slow on defense, we were slow on offense, and we didn't get a very fast start, Charles. And so, um, and, and no instance that things happen. Um, they score points, and we don't score points, and, and you dig yourself in that kind of hole. So, um, but I thought that you know once we settled down and. Got squared away, and we came back out playing football. Yeah, we're down 14 nothing in the first five minutes. So we got the football on our own nine yard line um, after a penalty, uh, a holding penalty pushed us back inside our 10 yard line. So PJ Simmons, a rush for 12 yards, kind of got us out of the hole. We were second and five, second and eight, second and 19, third and 11. Just talk about the importance of not playing behind the chains because it seems like. That's one of the things. No team wants that because defenses are so good nowadays, but trying to stay ahead of the chains or not be too far behind the chains. Well, when you get in those situations, Charles, you know, I don't think we have a, a third down and 19 in our playbook, you know. Um, so we have to make sure that we, we're doing the right things. And, and the penalties do occur at those times, and especially at those moments that when you're backed up um, and you get a penalty, and then you put stick yourself in a bigger hole. So. Um, we always try to make the first play a positive play. Um, th those are intentions. Um, uh, going forward, you know, just make no plays a positive play where you put yourself in second and short and, and um, third and short, whatever it may be. But um, those are intentions to come out and make positive plays on first down. We were third and 11 from New Mexico State's 43, and Chris Blair with a 23 yard reception. And we eventually punched it in first and goal from the three, uh, well, I'm sorry, second and goal. And uh, Waller's 12-yard touchdown made it 14-7. to That was a 91-yard drive, Coach. Excuse me, in 13 plays. 91 yards, and that was a good response. That was the, those are the things that we're capable of doing, So Once we start executing, doing it right, um, making those 91-yard drives and, and uh, those things of that nature. So that takes a lot off our defense. They get some rest and, and get ready to play again. You know, and those long drives like that, it means a lot uh, to a defense. You know, So um, offensively, it's a statement uh, when you drive that for and, and score. Uh, you're just really making a statement against the opposing defense. So um, there was some good stuff there in that drive, and I think they did a great job executing um, the play that we had in, and um, I think everything went well for us. It was a 91-yard drive, 13 plays, 555 off the clock. So you talked about getting your defense some rest. It was 14-7 to at that point. It was 14-7 to at the end of the first Quarter and coach, you look at uh, that first quarter. We had 75 yards rushing, 65 yards passing, 143 yards to 71, two to one. Despite the fact we were down in the game, and the difference obviously was that long kickoff return. It's 11 minutes after six o'clock. We'll go to the phone lines now. Marquise, it wouldn't be a Monday night, Fred McNair, without a call from Marquise. Good evening, Marquise. Marquise. Doing pretty good. Right. Good man. Yes, sir. We got to work, though, Marquis. He's going to work this week, and um, 
get some fundamental work in and get these guys ready to play. Yep, we appreciate it, Marquis. And yes, we will be in Vicksburg uh, next week. Hope you can uh, join us at the Next Level Sports Grill at uh, 4002 Highway 61 South. We appreciate you calling in, Marquise, and hope to see you in Vicksburg next week. Are you coming down? 601-738-5474. Uh, All right, Marquise, we appreciate you calling in. We'll take a time out here. We'll look at the second quarter. We hope to see Marquise. We hope to see all of you next week in Vicksburg. As uh, it'll be a, a great environment, getting ready for Jackson State. And Jackson State's still in the hunt. Alabama State is still in the hunt. And uh, should be a good one next week, of course, all corn in Jackson State. We'll take a break here. Give us a call, 601-877-6595. You can tweet a question, Tall Man Radio. You can text a question, 601-348-7254. We'll take a break. Second quarter recap coming up after this from C Spire on the Bray Sports Network. So you haven't lost your lucky socks since that fourth quarter comeback five years ago. At C Spire, we get it. You'll do anything to help your team win. Just like anything we do is inspired by you. We're your biggest fan. Lucky socks and all. From business to home to wireless, our inspiration is always you. C Spire. Customer inspired. Switch and save up to $500 on our best phones with trade in. Details at cspire.com. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes in Mississippi are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a this message presented by the Mississippi High School Activities Association and the Mississippi Athletic Administrators Association. And welcome back to the Fred McNair Radio Show on this Monday night. Don't forget, next week we'll be in Vicksburg at the Next Level Sports Grill. It's been kind of in the works for several weeks and uh, glad that uh, Marcus Warden, the Director of Institutional Advancement, and making sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed to make this happen. And we'll be there to bring you the Fred McNair Radio Show. For more information, 601-738-5474. We'll have the same format, of course. We'll talk about the bye week. We'll talk about Jackson State. We'll look at the standings, and we'll be taking questions from you in the audience for those who uh, wish to come out and support the Fred McNair Radio Show and Braves football. There'll be food specials. Of course, they have the big screen TV for all the uh, NFL and college action. There'll be some food specials there. So join us, won't you, for the Fred McNair Radio Show as we take the show live to Vicksburg. Uh, Coach, can, can we get Coach Boozen in, in the equipment truck ready to go? Is that can I, can I put my equipment on the truck? <laughs> <laughs> Is that possible? Or impossible. <laughs> you have to give him a lot of credit. Uh, Coach Booz is the equipment coordinator, and he drove the equipment from here to Las Cruces and back. And that uh, that says a lot because that's a long trip to drive. Yeah, he did, Charles. He's he's a great great person, Charles. You know, uh, guy you want to be around all the time. He did a wonderful job. Of, uh, you know, I asked him, I said, "Man, are you sure?" He said, "Yeah, Coach. I done drove from Indiana one time. So <laughs> I know I can drive to <laughs> Mexico State." So he did a great job with Charles. He's been doing a great job for us all all, all these times. So uh, good to have him on our staff. It's a long drive when we were when we were leaving. New Mexico State heading back to the airport on I-10. I saw a sign that said Beaumont, 852 miles. <laughs> I don't even like seeing those signs. <laughs> uh, and you go 75. The speed limit is 75 there. So uh, hey, I mean, you can however well you want to make of it. Well, let's let's make of something in the second quarter here, Coach. It was 14 to seven. And then New Mexico State kind of went on a run there. Um, they made it 21 to seven on a, a Atkins pass to Boone, 23 yards uh, from the 39-yard line. It was start of the second quarter, and then it was a fumble. A fumble set this up, and the fumble set up the run that New Mexico State had. You, you don't, you haven't seen this year, coach, the fumble exchange between Noah Johnson and running back, but there was one right there that New Mexico State got at our 40-yard line. Talk about. Obviously, what didn't happen there? Well, the biggest thing is I thought that um, 
he should have handed it off and he was looking to do something else with it and it kind of got caught between now, Charles, and we talked about it on the sideline and uh, just making those corrections and you know, like I said, you know, one of the one of the turnovers that result in the, in the points there too, Charles. So we eliminate that. We don't give him that touchdown there. Uh, but you know, it just happened and and uh, no one knows the mistake he made. That's the biggest thing about it. You know, he, he came back out and corrected everything he's done wrong. So it was 21 to seven with that touchdown. Then we got the ball with 12:20 left at our 25 yard line. We converted a fourth down before that turnover on the previous drive. We were faced with a third and five from our own 49. PJ for three yards, fourth and two from the Mexico State's 48 yard line. Coach McNair and I thought, hey, we picked up one fourth down. It was 21 to seven. Where our defense been kind of hanging in, why not try it again? But you decided to play football and punt on fourth and two. Yeah, I did, Charles. I think that was a great, 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 great decision to do that. I didn't want to get on the short field on on, on that drive. Um, you know, if it was been less than, than two yards, I may have, may have thought about going for it there, but um, just make the punt and, and uh, back them up a little bit. All right, so we did. We backed them up to the 18 yard line. And then, um, before you know it, Atkins to Caldwell, 43 yards from midfield. They got it to the Braves. Eight first and goal uh, from the 10, and then Huntley's 10 yard touchdown. You talk about a freshman, redshirt freshman quarterback. And one of the things that I was looking for, I mean, we tried to get to him. He had time in that pocket. And I know we were trying to get to him, but it just seemed like he could step up, something that we have been preventing the previous few weeks. But he was able to step up and make some plays. He was a very polished quarterback, Charles, just to be a redshirt freshman. You know, he, he did some good things right, uh, stepping up in the pocket and, and eluding the rush and, and those type of things. He's a really good, really heady guy, you know. Uh, played, played an extremely well ball game um, being a redshirt freshman. So it was 28-7 to 7 at that point. So we're, we're trying to stop the bleeding here as we got the ball after that with 8.29 left on fourth down and six, a 51-yard pump by McCullough, New Mexico State was backed up at their 10-yard line, and uh, next thing you know, they went 90 yards. And I thought that was a key moment in the game. We backed them up at their 10, and it was a situation, if I'm not mistaken, they had five third downs behind the chains, and they converted four, and, of course, the touchdown. That was a huge drive right there because we had them backed up. We had a chance to kind of, you know, flip the field a little bit, and they went 91 yards. Yeah, they, they put together a good drive, each other. We just couldn't stop the bleeding on that one, and um, uh, they converted on third downs, and they did a great job of doing that. So, you know, when you talk about football, you talk about third down conversion in a, in, a, in a moment like that, and I think they did a great job of doing that in, uh, in that case. So it was 35-7 to seven at that point, but we were able to get a late touchdown with 155 left in the first half. Noah Johnson to Harris for 50 yards on first and 10 from midfield. And, uh, you know, that was a pretty good throw by Noah Johnson. And Harris, again, finds his way to the football that makes big plays. And that's correct. You know, those guys are coming of age, and I think Noah's is really uh, coming of age itself. You know, played a played extremely good ball game uh, other than just the, uh, the fumble that he had. Uh, I think he's trying to be a leader we need to, to make this team go, and especially offense, you know, charge. And uh, no receivers, you know, he connected with nine different receivers during the course of the game. So. Uh, I thought that was big, and going through his progression, his reads, and, and finding an open guy, you know, which, you know, I think uh, Coach White is doing a really good job of, of getting that transition with him to do that. So um, I think, you know, it's, it's better ball yet to come, hopefully, you know, and still play well. It was 35-14, to 14, Coach, at the end of the first half, and when Cedric Tillman went to you, I was expecting a, a disappointed Fred McNair, but you were very optimistic. Well, Charles, you know, the biggest thing is that the guys, they know they got to play a better ball game, you know, and they went into halftime and made the, the correct adjustments in, in, in our offense and the defense, and it came out better to play the second half. But, you know, just knowing that the, the team that we were playing uh, one of the FBS schools it was a real good football team, and knowing that we can be in the ball game um, at any time in the first half, um, you know, you, you look at it that way, and, yes, it was kind of like, you know, we just got to play a better second half, and I thought that we came out and did that. So I'll take a timeout here. We'll be right back after this timeout as we look at the third quarter, in which uh, the Braves fell behind again but made it a game. So we'll take a break. We'll be right back after this on the Fred McNair Radio Show. 
Jack Stewart, located here on the campus of Old Cohen State University, where you'll find a full line of convenience and grocery store products. And while you're at Jack's, if you need a fill-up, Jack's has you covered. Jack's is open seven days a week, 7 a.m. until. Go by and see little Jack, my friend, who's walking in the footsteps of his father, the late Big Jack, and give you the best service he has to offer. So stop by Jack's. When you go by, tell him that you heard it on WBRL 91.7 FM. That's Jack's store, located here on the campus of Old Coin State University. Jack's is a proud supporter of WBRL 91.7 FM and ASU Braves football. Go Braves, go! Hi, this is Adam Rodriguez. Did you know that today, one out of every four American kids is Hispanic? That means many of the future doctors, engineers, scientists, and entrepreneurs of our country can be your kids. We all know how hard it is for you to send them to college. This is why we want you to know you are not alone. Many support you, and the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan, and pay for your kids' college education. Learn more at hsf.net. Brought to you by the Hispanic Scholarship Fund and the Ad Council. At WPRL 91.7 FM. All right, welcome back to the Fred McNair Radio Show. 23 minutes after 6 o'clock, give us a call, 601-877-6595. You can tweet a question, Tall Man Radio. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook, uh, Charles Edmond, and you can text a question. We have a couple of texts that have come in, 601-348-7254. Show your brave pride in your home or in your office with an Alcorn State back-to-back -back SWAC Champions replica trophy. Trophies are $20 a piece that make a great Christmas gift or desk paperweight. Order your replica trophy online today for 20 bucks at allcorn.edu slash foundation. All right, Coach, let's look at the third quarter. It was 35-7, to 7 and you know what? The Braves just, just kept on, kept on keeping on, as they say. 9-11 left in the third quarter. We started at our 13-yard line. Chris Blair's five-yard touchdown made it. 35 to 21. We had a second and nine. Uh, we had a third and four, first and goal. And, you know, that was a good ball control drive. Nine plays, 87 yards, 312 off the clock. You have a pretty good combination with Blair and Harris. Both of those guys are really playing lights out here, Blake. Yeah, so they, they, they pick it up a little bit, Charles, and I think it's the right time to come around uh, with those guys. And, um, and I think they were the biggest target that Noah have and, and, um, and getting open. Uh, doing the thing they're supposed to do and, and um, making the catches with two charges is huge. So um, anytime you get a, you know guys in, in the mix when they get open catching passes, I uh, kind of feel good about that. So uh, they're doing a great job of uh, mixing it up. So 35-7, 35-14, 35-21, Mexico's next drive started at their 26-yard line with 5.59 left. They converted a third and eight, a third and four, a, th a fourth and one. And on fourth and 11, um, they were able to convert that. And Owens with a touchdown uh, that was taken away. And Brown's field goal from 30 yards, Coach McNair. You're able to hold New Mexico State despite the fact that they converted three or four third downs. They had a fourth and one that they converted. You kept them out of the end zone. You held them to a field goal, and that made it 38-21. That was good, Charles, you know, just to get that stop, uh, that stop there by the defense, you know always good to kind of help you out and kind of slow them down a little bit, you know, so uh, that was big for us, to just, that, just that field goal. So it's 38 to 21 at the end of the third quarter, so, you know, we're at, you're at that point, 15 minutes to go, you're not exactly in it, you're not out of it, 17 points, you can make that up, so what was your thoughts here at the end of the third quarter? Well, just continue to execute uh, the way we've been doing, we came out at halftime, Charles, you know, uh, keep executing, keep making the long drives and, and getting a stop here and there, you know, and and right now, you know, we're back in the ball game. So uh, those big drives for us and coming out and, and the beginning of the fourth quarter, I thought we did a great job. Through three quarters, or at least the third quarter numbers, we outgained New Mexico State 151 to 69. So we really dominated that that third quarter. It was a it was a high scoring game, a ton of yards for the Braves overall, 91 plays overall in the game. So let's look at the fourth quarter. So as we look at it, coach, we're able to Get a touchdown as Noah Johnson, Radarius Anderson, 29 yards as he stayed down the sideline. 
They had to look at it to make sure he had every puppy down, and he did as he tickled that sideline 29 yards out to make it a 10-point game. That was a good job by uh, Radaris Sanders. He's a strong receiver, Charles, and uh, taller the statue, and did a great job of breaking the tackle and, and getting down the sideline and getting in the end zone for him. So that was real big. And was also big, and we were talking about it, Coach, we needed our defense at some point in time to come up with a turnover. Atkins sacked a fumble. Uh, they took a good look at it, probably 10 minutes. It was ruled a fumble, and uh, Shippy got it, and we were in business, Coach, first and 10 from the Mexico State's 34. And that was huge, uh, getting in and getting the sack fumble uh, of that nature and giving us an opportunity to get the ball back and, uh, and try to make something out of it. So Waller with a 17-yard run to make it 38 to 35. So after being down 35 to seven, Coach, what were you thinking now? 38-35. Not just as it was, Charles. We did a great job of coming out in the second half and, and executing, making stops, and we did, and, and uh, getting fumbled, getting turnovers, and things of that nature. So that was big for us, and, uh, and getting to that close uh, for 35. That's a one-score game. 10:43 left in the fourth quarter. After being down 35 to seven, it's 38-35. So it's a ball game. 10:37 left. New Mexico State started at the 32-yard line. Um, Hundley for three yards. Then O.J. Clark. He had some key receptions. Uh, 13 yards to move the chains. Uh, they got to the Braves' 11-yard line, where Atkins rushed for three yards. They got to the Braves' nine and then Huntley for nine yards for the touchdown. You talked about it. We talked about Huntley last week in the pregame. We'll scat back. But they used him more so as a receiver and a slot guy, and he did a little damage there. He just get the ball in the hand, so that's what he's for. And they did a great job of doing that, um, not only in the backfield, but it's, uh, moving him out in motion, throwing to him as a receiver and uh, in screen game and all that kind of stuff. So they did a good job getting in the football. He's a dynamic player, and like I said, you know, it was a real good football team to play, John. They also had a back in Gibson who really hurt us in terms of the short yardage. He's about 220 pounds. So you had Huntley, but then Gibson got those hard, tough yards, it seemed like. Yeah, he's a big, powerful back, John, big old guy. Uh, he ran hard on those short yards, and they, they needed to get the first downs and stuff. Uh, so we did a great job doing that. And plus, we, you know, we missed a lot of tackles that we thought we should have uh, been more uh, physical with him. We missed a lot of tackles with Joe. There were some times, Coach, during the game when it was third and seven, third and eight, third and six. Some of those tight ends receivers just sat in the middle of sat, sat in the scene, just sat there. And I know we didn't get very much of a pass rush. We tried that, but just nothing fancy. Just sitting there in that scene, just to get enough of the first down. Yeah, good good concept and route uh, combination, that Charles. And we we expected them to do what they did, and uh, that's exactly what they did. We should have we should have been all over that. And I think uh, we kind of eyes get all. Get, get big sometimes and we see different stuff and, and other than what you're supposed to see, but uh, we just got to get better with our eyes and, and, and feel it. We're practicing it all week, so um, they know what to expect. So the big touchdown there that made it 45 to 35. So the Braves, seven and a half minutes left starting at their 17 yard line, seven plays, 46 yards on a fourth and 20. Noah Johnson's passing complete to. Uh, Tavares Johnson. So let, let's talk about that drive because it was first and 20 at New Mexico State's 37. We went deep to Harris. We went deep to Blair. So in that part of the game, when you're behind the chains like that, you, like you always say, there's no one play that you can get 30 yards or 25. You think in that sequence, little check downs, get four here, five here, instead of third down and 20, maybe third and eight something like that. Yeah, especially that way, Charles. You know, you have to get some of it back. You don't try to get it all back. And I thought that um, we didn't do a good job at that point to, to where we could take down or, or even a run. And, um, and I talked with Coach Kentuck about it. You know, we, we both agree on the same thing, you know. So um, but we're still some of the things that we can look at and look back at and try to fix. Um, not put ourselves in that situation for one, you know. Uh, it would be good. But we talked about that. And, uh, and uh, we're good. So New Mexico State took it over on downs at their 37-yard line, and um, there was a sideline warning against New Mexico State. Um, they got the ball to Hundley for 60 yards on a second and 20 from their own 40-yard line. So just talk about that play. That was one of the biggest plays, well, second biggest play of the game other than the kickoff return. It was. It was like I said, it was a screen pass. You know, we had a call for it, and um, we didn't get to it. And um, 
We just missed a lot of tackles, and the guy was just running. He's, he's a tough run of Charles. And he, once he broke loose, it was just about over with. Um, we just cut that across the field. So that made it 52 to 35. We got the football with 346 left. And it was good to see this team continuing to play. We started at our four yard line, 14 plays, 96 yards, and a touchdown to Waller. And Cedric Tillman and I talked about it. You know, even though time was running out, just for moral victory's sake. And I don't know if you're a guy that believes in moral victories, but just to get that touchdown late said a lot about how this team just kept playing till the last second. That's one thing about them, John. They didn't stop playing at all. And then we were down 35 70. They, they, we, we still had a chance, you know. When we was on the field, we had a chance. And uh, those guys that that late drive there meant a lot as far as this team was, you know, building character and uh, just showing the growth and the maturity that this team has come since they played um, uh, Georgia Tech first game, you know, uh, playing at this level again late in the year and, and just showing the growth of each and every one of the players that's out there, you know, how much they've improved and, and how much they mature uh, over, the, over the whole season uh, uh, as a team. So I thought one of the, the uh, touchdowns or one of the drives was killed with a holding penalty. You know, we didn't have or many penalties called in the game. I thought we had a big holding penalty that they kind of set us back. And I thought the whole game was kind of set up by maybe four or five plays. You know, big kickoff return. We had a turnover. A penalty set us back. Half dozen plays, half of them go our way. We might win the game. And you're right, Charles. And you talk about the penalties and... And uh, it was good. We had five, four, nine yards. But you know, at the same time, you know, they're playing flawless ball, and they're doing a great job. And um, I thought that you know, things like that, when you're playing a good caliber team like this, Charles, you can't afford to really, really play uh, with penalties. And so we have to try and play penalty free. Uh, we had five for four, nine yards, but you know, still two of those penalties were big, big, big against us. And, uh, and that, that we can't allow when you get behind each other. I, I know when you're playing up, doesn't matter who you play. I mean, maybe I'm overstating this, but you almost have to play a perfect game. There's no such thing, but you really have to play well. You do, and, and like I said, those kind of things like that really hurt you, you know, um, when you're playing up like they're playing good teams because they take advantage of that, you know, holding, and then you have to punt on third down, on fourth down, and, and um, give, them, give them the ball back. So as long as you play with the third and short, you have a chance there, child. But when you're going from first and 20 to third and 18 or something like that, it'll get kind of tough for, for you. All right, so we'll take a break right here, and we'll be right back. We'll look at the numbers after this timeout as the Braves some gaudy stats in this game. It was like a video game, back and forth. Great second half, exciting second half. The Braves played with a lot of fire and effort, just came up short. We'll take a break. We'll be right back here on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Thirty-six minutes after the hour here on the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University. Some rain expected as uh, tomorrow is election day. And of course, we have Lady Braves basketball tomorrow at the Whitney Arena, the season and home opener as the Lady Braves take on Lane College. We'll have the broadcast on the Braves Sports Network at 515. Don't forget, once again, next week we will be in Vicksburg at the Next Level Sports Grill located at 4002 Highway 61 South. We'll be live there. We'll take the questions from the audience. And, of course, we'll kick it around a bit, talk about the bye week, and we'll talk about Jackson State. 
they let Tony Hughes go, and they come up with a huge win over Prairie View, pretty much eliminating the Panthers and Jackson State, Bama State, and Alcorn. It's a three-way battle in the Eastern Division. In the Western Division, it's Southern and Grambling. We'll talk all about that coming up. But again, we'll be at Vicksburg next Monday night as we take the Fred McNair Radio Show on the road to the Next Level Sports Grill, 4002 Highway 61 South. For more information, call 601-738-5474, 601-738-5474. All right, Coach, let's look at the final numbers. As we talked about, this game featured 1,183 yards of total offense. We ran 91 plays, Coach, 91 plays. Plays. I mean, we're fighting, fighting, fighting upstream. Of course, you got to get a lot of plays in, but uh, terrific offensive output, almost 700 yards of offense. Oh, yeah, Charles. When I mean, you're running that many plays, and that's what you want as an offense. Uh, you want to reach around that 90 more uh, in plays, and, and plus a lot of numbers that Charles the 654 yards of total offense, which was good. You know, I thought that the official did a great job of, um, of um, mixing it up there and pass and run. Um, but you know, just this deal, you know, you take away you know, that, that kickoff return and that, that formal there. Um, they had a pretty much ball game. Thought offensive line, talk about that. Only two sacks by New Mexico State. Uh, well, actually, one sack, I should say. One sack by New Mexico State in the game. We had two sacks. They did a great job, Charles, and, and most of it is to you know, know just get the ball out of his hand <clears throat> uh, on time and, and things of that nature. And, you know, a lot of times, usually, usually speaks to get them out of trouble, you know. so. Um, they did a great job up front and in, um, in pass protection and, and, of course, in the running game. They're blocking it over the seams and, and gaps and stuff. So uh, we just got to continue to press on that and, and uh, press on the, the, the importance of it all is, is just eliminate the penalty and the holding and, and things like that. But uh, I think we did a great job of, of doing what we had to do to try to get this ball game on. We had 338 yards rushing. Noah Johnson, 138, and Waller, 137. Waller named the newcomer of the week this week in the conference. And Noah Johnson, um, offensive player of the week. And we were coming back from New Mexico. Cedric Tillman and I were talking. It's out there on social media. Some people would say, there's one game left, of course, that Noah Johnson, offensive player of the year in the SWAC conference. And when you think about it, I mean, just, you know, you stew over it a little bit. Who else is putting up these offensive type numbers throughout the league? I mean, are you surprised at what Noah Johnson is is doing right now? The last couple of games, about 800 yards passing, and and what he's been able to do running the football. No, I'm not very surprised at all, Charles. This one went taking so long to get it going. You know, most of we try to look for it every weekend, and and uh, that's the biggest thing with him. You know, um, he's a solid player, and uh, trying to run the offense the way it's supposed to be ran, and, and things of that nature, Charles. But it's one of the games that that uh, you look at, and, and against a team like New Mexico State, and and he having these kind of numbers against them. So, um, you know, he just got to continue to play the way he's been playing. And, and it all comes. You just stop pressing and just take what they give you and, and then uh, let it roll, you know, get the right proper reads on the runs and, and uh, pass P RPO stuff and, and, uh, and making the right decision with the ball. That's, that's what it all comes down to, Charlie. As a broadcaster at the press box, and you know this yourself, being a quarterback, how do you know when a quarterback is pressing? A lot of times you get out of character, start doing things you don't normally see you do with throwing the ball too quick or holding too long and not really seeing the defense the way you should see it. And, and uh, just getting out of those things and just drop his feet and, and um, you know, just everywhere, you know, sometimes you kind of feel that. Just settle down and just play football. And I thought he did a great job of that coming out the gate, you know, just, just really figuring out what they're trying to do to him on, uh, on defense. And I thought that he did a great job of doing that. Played a good, solid ball game, you know, other than just the fumble. Uh, from the reception standpoint, 316 in terms of receptions. Harris with 108 yards, uh, followed by Blair with 72, and Radarius Anderson, 7 for 69. The three top there. McCullough, five punts, averaging 35.4. Um, defensively, Coach, you look at the defensive numbers, nine tackles by Ely, Cole with nine, Wilson with eight and Kinsler with eight. Talk a little bit about Karon Kinsler. Uh, he's, a, he's a freshman, Charles, and uh, he's been doing a great job for us I mean, um, this whole year, you know, just being a freshman. That's a lot on you when you come and start as a freshman, Charles, but that's the kind of player he is. He, he's kind of quiet, very humble guy, uh, do what he taught, and, uh, and, and just make plays, you know. And good to have him back in the lineup this week, you know, so, um, so it'll be big for us coming down the stretch. 
final question here before we put a capper on this game. You were with me. You talked about it at the top. I counted the uh, the scratches, the players that were out, about 18. We were without a lot of kids. Uh, Charles Hughes was out. Solomon Muhammad was out. We were without a lot of folks on Saturday. It was, Charles, and, uh, you know, self-inflicted wounds sometimes, Charles. Uh, there's, there's a lot of it, but uh, as I talked to him today, you know, going down the stretch the next couple of weeks uh, before, the, before the Jackson State game, you know, the sacrifice they have to make, you know, uh, doing all the right things um, as far as this team goes. You know, you don't want to do anything to, to hurt this team. Uh, so we got to do all the little things right, you know, getting up going to class, getting up coming to practice, um, doing the extra stuff to go the extra mile to, to prepare for uh, another ball game on the 17th. So um, you know, regardless of it all, you know, we, we have to uh, be accountable for each and every one, especially when you're dealing with this team, uh, the way this team been playing. and and uh, some of the pieces that's missing uh, with injury and, and other things that goes on. So uh, we did have a lot of guys out this game. So um, that's the thing that they have to look at. You know, they have to make sure that they're doing the right thing, uh, going to treatment, getting better for these next couple weeks um, before the game. Uh, we have to make sure that they're in line, uh, doing all the right things and, and taking care of their body uh, the way they should. So I think Jaleesa, she's done a tremendous job of, uh, with these young men, getting them back to the playing surface. Um, in a short amount of time, you know, where they can play. So uh, when you're missing the key components of a puzzle, Charles, there's always something that uh, you can find negative that, that comes out of a game. So that's one of the things that, that we can see. But hopefully, you know, this week we get all those guys back and, and get those guys uh, get, get those guys ready to play. Braves fall by the final score of 52-42 to 42 against New Mexico State. Of course, an exciting game, an exciting contest. The Braves made it home safely, of course. And, uh, last week, and as we make the turn here before we take a break, uh, some some tragic news. Alcorn State University sophomore Jayla Alexandria Gray was uh, killed in a tragic car accident with some bad weather last week, um, and that's been the talk around the campus over the last week or so. Uh, the celebration of life services for her will be held Saturday, November 10th at 11 a.m. at the Kate Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. 1000 Ridgeway Street in Jackson. Visitation will be held Friday, November the 9th at the Jackson Memorial Funeral Services at 922 Woodrow Wilson from 5 to 7. And uh, Coach McNair, just tragic news there last week. It was some rough weather. I didn't realize how bad it was this way. I live just outside of Vicksburg and my lights were out for about eight hours, but it was pretty bad down this way. Our engineer lives in Vidalia. He said a tornado kind of went through there. His mailbox was destroyed. I mean, there was a lot, a lot going on down in uh, these neck of the woods weather-wise. Yeah, and I thought it goes out to the family, Charles. And uh, that's one thing that our guys, we, we understand uh, when things of that nature happen and how much people really need you. Uh, your prayers and your thoughts that goes out to those guys. And I think over the course of this whole week, our guys in, in, in our prayer and our, and our thing that we do for as far as the team, that we did mention her and her family um, many times. Uh, Charles and uh, like I said, you know, uh, my prayer goes out to that family and and and, and, um, and everything. So uh, we're very sad by that uh, that news um, when we woke up the next morning. So uh, we understand and uh, hope the best with the family. Keep blessing. The university is offering and will continue to provide counseling and support services to the Alcorn community throughout their time of need. We'll take a break right here. We'll be right back on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Socks since that fourth quarter <coughs> five years ago. At Ceasefire, we get it. You'll do anything to help your team win, just like anything we do is inspired by you. We're your biggest fan, Lucky Socks and all. From business to home to wireless, our inspiration is always you. Ceasefire, customer inspired. Switch and save up to $500 on our best phones with trade in. Details at ceasefire.com. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes in Mississippi are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, and part of a complete education. This message presented by the Mississippi High School Activities Association and the Mississippi Athletic Administrators Association. All right, welcome back to the 
Fred McNair Radio Show here on this Monday night. Glad you can join us here on the Braves Sports Network. 47 minutes after the hour, the Braves have a bye week, of course, and uh, we'll get ready for Jackson State, and that will be a huge contest. Of course, you can text a question, 601-348-7254, 601-348-7254. So as we go uh, to the text line, um, you talked about special teams issues, coaching. Now that that's you know Lane Powell has done a, a nice job with that, and uh, just the last couple of weeks, almost the same kind of play. What's what's the one the one thing that has to happen on, on kickoff returns? And the the other thing is for me when that happened, I was thinking, okay, if you kick the ball, you have dangerous kickoff return guys, right? You kick it out of the back of the end zone, they get it at the twenty five. You kick it on the sideline out of bounds and get it at the 35. So the, the balance there between dangerous kickoff return men, getting it at the 25, getting it at the 35, you have the coffin corner kick to kind of pin guys back. Talk about how that goes through your mind, especially when you have dangerous kickoff return guys. It's like a, <clears throat> like a chess match, Charles. And a lot of times that what we try to do is try to pin them uh, between the sideline and the numbers there uh, when we're kicking off. It just depends on how dangerous the kickoff return guy, and, and I, I, I almost blame myself for that one, uh, Charles, because I should have known that was number one on our sideline. But just looking at it, when I would go down there and talk to Coach Powell about the kickoff team, I didn't really see him. But when the ball was in flight, that's when I noticed the number that he was wearing. That was the Hummer kid, and that was the guy that, that returned the kick. And, and normally, we, we, when we see a, a kicker, a return of that, that had that kind of wheels on it, Charles. We, we never kicked on and uh, so the the next time we kicked off, we never kicked it to him. I would, always kicked it away from him, and uh, I thought Corey did a great job of doing it after that return there, of getting the ball placed where we needed it. All right, that's B.J. Jackson in Jackson, Louisiana, with the text. Willie Reynolds from Florence, South Carolina. Great showing by the team. Do we think the offense has finally turned the corner? and hit their stride through the air as well as the ground. This is from Willie Reynolds in Florence, South Carolina. And I just hopefully, Charles, we can keep that thing balanced the way we've been doing it, man. And, uh, those are our intentions as coaches and um, you know, the offensive coaches. They always put a, get the game plan and, 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 and everything together, Charles. And that, those are our intentions every week. So uh, sometimes you, you run into a buzzsaw uh, where you can't do some things that you can, you expect to do. Uh, then you have to change and make adjustments. So I thought we did a great job of doing that. Uh, through the course of the year. All right, uh, Robinson, um, talk about him. Of course, we were without one of our big uh, kickoff return guys, 44 Robinson. Talk about him and getting him into the rotation. That's another question from the text line. That's one of the things that we talked about all week, me and Coach Powell, and, and uh, just putting him back there and maybe get some good returns. He's a fast guy. He's a track guy. So um, we brought him on and for those purposes and just to get him the, the feel of it. <clears throat> and this was one of the games that we thought we could make a difference in him uh, without Jabo being back there. So. We put him back there, and he did a pretty good job of, of some of the returns that we had of just catching the ball because a lot of times that they, they get out on us so fast when the ball is kicked in their zone, we don't really have time to return it. And um, so the best thing is we stay in and get on the 25. TJ Mayfield always chimes in on the Twitter feed talking about the game Saturday. Defensively, what play stood out to you the most in that game Saturday? Well, the biggest thing is just the, the, the screen that Huntley had made in the uh, in the fourth quarter, um, I thought we should have just came up and rattled that tackle, but we, we let them go on that one. So uh, we scored our big, they scored big on that one, on um, that 60 yard uh, screen pass. All right, and uh, Mr. T, comment, congratulate you on a good season so far and the injuries. I know give your team a little bit of rest of some of the guys that will be out. How many of those guys you think will be ready for Jackson State? I think all of them will be ready, Charles. You know, um, <clears throat> Just dealing with those injuries, and and some of them is minor injuries, and um, but hopefully Jaleesa should, should her her plan is to get them all back for the Jackson State ball game, uh, so that will occur. I, I know she'll do a great job of getting those guys in treatment and, and getting them ready for the game. Don't forget, folks, we will be in Vicksburg next Monday night, and uh, hope you can join us at the Next Level Sports Grill, 4002 Highway 61 South. 601-738-5474. Arthur Davis is texting me throughout the course of the show. He informed me that there will be a wing buffet 
for eleven ninety nine. There will also be a midnight breakfast buffet Friday night, the Alcorn, the Friday night before the Alcorn Jackson State game, and uh, throughout the weekend a Sunday brunch as well. Of course, the McNair Show. We will be in Vicksburg next Monday night at the Next Level Sports Grill, forty zero two Highway sixty one South six zero one seven three eight. 5474. Coach, talking about all this food, I'm getting hungry. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after this as we look at the SWAC report, the games around the conference. Been getting texts and calls. Where do we stand? What do we have to do? We'll talk about it after this one minute timeout on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Jack Stewart, located here on the campus of Old Coin State University, where you'll find a full line of convenience and grocery store products. And while you're at Jack's, if you need a fill up, Jack's has you covered. Jack's is open seven days a week, 7 a.m. until. Go by and see little Jack, my friend, who's walking in the footsteps of his father, the late Big Jack, and give you the best service he has to offer. So stop by Jack's. When you go by, tell him that you heard it on WBRL 91.7 FM. That's Jack Store, located here on the campus of Old Coin State University. Jax is a proud supporter of WBRL 91.7 FM and ASU Braves football. Go Braves, go! But did you know when you donate stuff to Goodwill, you help provide job training for people right here in your community? Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at goodwill.org. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. At WPRL 91.7 FM. All right, 53 minutes after the hour, of course, uh, Noah Johnson, Offensive Player of the Week, and Waller, Newcomer of the Week, third time Coach McNair, that he has been uh, nominated for that Newcomer of the Week. Could he be Newcomer of the Year? Well, I'll tell you what, some postseason hardware could be coming uh the Braves' way here as we roll into the end of the season, which will be for the Braves next week. Around the conference, some close games, Coach. Grambling, 24, Valley 19, Alabama A&M. Boy, we caught them at the right time, didn't we? They beat UAPB 45-14. to Alabama State over Texas Southern 30-21. to So what are the standings and what do the Braves, where are they right now? Bottom line, folks, it's a three-horse race in the east. Alcorn, Alabama State. Jackson State. Coach McNair, I was hoping for the triple play when I woke up on Saturday. A Braves win over New Mexico State, a Jackson State loss to Prairie View, and an Alabama State loss to Texas Southern. I struck out three times, 0 for 3. None of that happened. <laughs> so so uh, the bottom line is, Coach, we beat Jackson State. We win the East. Jackson State plays at Alabama State, a 2 o'clock game. Loser of that is out. Winner stays alive another week. And if Jackson State wins and they beat Prairie View, well, it'll be something out here in, um, in a couple of weeks is that game for all the marbles in the Eastern Division. Uh, Prairie View eliminated in the West. It comes down to Grambling and Southern in the Bayou Classic. And anyone who left Grambling for dead, and I have to raise my hand, Larry Sanders, I'm raising my hand here. I'm on YouTube right now. I thought Grambling was out of it, but no, they're not. It's Grambling and Southern in the Bayou Classic. Grambling plays Alabama A&M. That game does not count in the conference standings. One of two games this year in which it has not. Alcorn, Texas Southern didn't count. Grambling, Alabama A&M this Saturday. That doesn't count for either team. It's going to come down to the Bayou Classic in the West, regardless of what happens, even with Southern as they host UAPB, regardless of what Southern does or what they don't do on Saturday. It's still going to come down to the Bayou Classic, Coach McNair. So it's a uh, it's getting pretty interesting in the SWAC conference. It's never a dull moment, is it? Always is, Charles. Always is. <laughs> All right. And, um, we, of course, this happened on Wednesday. The SWAC, due to a conflict at Legion Field with Conference USA, the SWAC championship game will be on a SWAC campus. The highest-seeded team will host a championship game. Could be Alcorn, of course. Could be Southern. Could be Grambling, depending on how things shake down. Uh, your thoughts on the conference deciding to move the game on campus. I think it's great, Charles. Uh, and, uh, this is a good venue for uh, SWAC schools to, to host a uh, SWAC championship on their campus. And, uh, you know, and it'll be big for the school, uh, for the kids, you know, and not having to travel. Um, I think one of the things that that, that it will do is uh, it'll bring some revenue to the schools. Uh, I think, Charles, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad that it's, it's going to be at a, at a, at a SWAC school. Wouldn't it be great if 
It's all corn. We get it done. Southern gets it done. They got to win the Bayou Classic, of course. All corn at Southern out here for the SWAC championship. How crazy will that be? In a good way, I mean. How, I mean, how wild and how wild will that be? It'll be something, Joe. <laughs> like I said, we just got to go in and get a get a good game plan together for Jackson State, Charles. And, and that's the only thing that, that's, that we're thinking about now is, is playing them uh, here at home on the 17 and, uh, and just being ready to play. Come up with a good game plan and, and execute it well, and I think everything will be fine. Well, let's look at our next opponent, the bye week. That's the biggest opponent that we'll see, Charles. I mean, that's, that's the biggest one that we'll see. But, um, it, it's going to be good, Charles. we got some work we got to do uh, uh, this week. Um, the kid was off Sunday, and I gave him today off. And, and um, of course, the coaches didn't break it down film on, on our next opponent, which will be Jackson State. So, um, you know, we'll get back to work tomorrow, come out tomorrow and practice and get some fundamental stuff done and, and go back to square one, working on basics. So, um, Get ready for Jackson State throughout the whole week and, and um, give the kids a couple of days off on the weekend and, and let them enjoy themselves and, and uh, rest up. So it's going to be a tough week next week in preparation. This team deserves We may be probably the last team in the, in the world to have a bye week. I mean, this is a late bye week for us, but it comes at a great time after a good game against New Mexico State, tough. And then we get ready for our number one rival, playing for – the division marbles. So, I mean, you know, as it shakes out, doesn't get any better than that. You get a chance to get rest while Jackson State's going to be, I think, in a dogfight with Alabama State and Montgomery. And no doubt, Charles. That's the thing. You know, we're coming off the New Mexico State game and we didn't have anybody to get seriously injured. Um, we, we, we injured free right now and uh, the guys that got the little boo boos and, and the bobo, we got to get them ready to play uh, next week. So, it's been good for us. This week could be, this bye week could be great for us. Uh, mentally and physically, so just get back in the swing of things. I don't know what I'm going to do, Coach McNair. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. i got basketball games Tuesday and Friday, but what else is there to do? I'm just so used to a football preparation. And I tell you what, just enjoy it, Charles, <laughs> and, 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 and make the most of the moment. So uh, <laughs> and we're going to get ready to play football. Be grateful for this bye week, and we definitely will. Coach, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week from Vicksburg. Looking forward to that at the next level. All right, Charles, thank you. And the Braves will try to get to the next level with a victory over Jackson State next week. We'll be at the next level, Sports Grill, live for the McNair Show. Join us next Monday night. That'll do it for the Fred McNair Radio Show. Don't forget, I'll be at the Whitney Arena tomorrow at 515. Lady Braves and Lane College join us on the Braves Sports Network. I'm Charles Edmond. So long, everybody.